wicked people of Nineveh heard the word of the Lord through Jonah and believed and repented and were spared. One greater than Jonah is here. That's me, the Lord Jesus, he said. And you're not hearing me. And this will be the sign of the end time. One of the multiple signs is that God's people who claim they have light and in reality, they are blind and bound like Samson. And their sincerity is without a question. We're rich, increase with goods, have need of nothing. And we're praising God and we're serving God and we're honoring God. But that light is in reality darkness. It's the same passage that Jesus said. If the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Don't be making the same decision as Jonah. Don't pick and choose what you like and what you don't like. It's simple obedience unto God. And if God said it, believe it and do it and be obedient unto him. If you don't, there's a dilemma out there. A lot of people out here in the world, at one time they believed God, served God, and now here anymore we're finding people out here whose lives have been wrecked. And they, like Jonah, they've got a whale ride going on. Amen. And you can see all through his dilemma if you'll go to that next thing. Yes, sir, he had a dilemma, but he is in misery, verses 3 through 6. He talked about the bars around him. He talked about all the stuff that, that old animal had been, that old mammal had been. And a lot of people talk about fish and mammal. I don't want to go there, don't we? If you've got to fuss about that in your Bible, you ain't never going to understand your Bible. Jesus said a whale, Jonah said a great fish, then people, then there they are, that school of negative thought and all the want to debate. Well, everybody knows a mammal ain't a fish. If it's just some type of marine creature, I don't know what it was. I personally believe big old blue whale, whatever it was. But it swallowed him. And he was down in misery. I'd hate to have been that. And they're praying to not to drown. See, you'd change your mind when things turn out really bad. You get thrown in the jailhouse, all of a sudden you want God. Doctors say you got cancer, all of a sudden you change your tune. Somebody said your wife's done left another man and you for the last one to find out and your heart's shattered, then all of a sudden you don't come looking for Brother Mike. When you get started on a whale ride, brother, you'll change your mind. You ain't gonna, I've never seen anybody in an ICU unit with their youngin' or spouse or loved one back there running their old Baptist mouth. Well, maybe a few come to think of it. <laughs> but usually criticism and judgment and all that stuff flies out the window when you get overboard and that thing swallows you up. But you don't have to stay in that misery. He started praying. He remembered in verse 7, look at in your Bible. <laughs> he remembered another time when he started out with God. He remembered another time when God's blessings and God's power was in his life. And verse 8, you'll look about mercy. And then when he remembered that salvation is of the Lord, there's your might. Get this this morning, one of the greatest statements Jonah made from the belly of that creature when he got down to it and said, salvation is of the Lord. It's not of the Baptists, it's not of the Methodists, it's certainly not of Mike Sage, and it's not of you either. So when we start thinking this is me, mine, and mine, and nobody else, and I gotta look out for me because ain't nobody else will, I tell you, you didn't read that in the Bible. That's modern ideology. Well, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. God's caring for you. I got to watch out for myself and I got to do what's best. Have you ever not read the golden rule that Jesus said, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you? Don't you know that the spiritual mind is a strong mind and that mind of Christ is, it ain't what's good for me, it's what's good for you. But if Jesus is the grandest personification of that, when he said, not my will, but thy will be done, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went to the cross for you and laid down the sum total of everything he is and everything he has he gave up for you that's why Paul said if it meant my brethren to be saved I myself would be accursed 
He knew that's what Jesus did for him. And if Jesus did that for him, Paul would be willing to to join Jesus in that ultimate sacrifice of self. So from the dilemma comes the might. He said, salvation's of the Lord. I ought to have done what God told me to do. I ought to have went on over there to where God told me to go. And about that time, I promise you, any old sorry backslid preacher would make anybody sick and even made a whale sick. That thing got upset, stomach, nauseated, and those old big propeller uh, tail fins and old big old dorsal fins guided that old big fish all the way back. Praise God. He went yon way on his own and God brought him back it might have been unpleasant it might have been unorthodox but God was bringing that old boy back I'm here to tell you friend God will bring you back you might try to get away but he's got you even if he's got to throw you in a storm and down the goozle of a whale he'll get you back to where he wanted to have you all along somebody ought to say thank you Jesus for that that thing got nauseated, come over there, right back over there <laughs> near Joppa itself, and got to. I'm t- finally, here he come. All that green seaweed, slimy whale puke up there on the shore, and there come an old thing come out of there, bleach white from the digestive juices, uh, weeds hanging all over it. If young'uns got to running, people said, get the shotguns and kill that thing. That's a sea monster for sure. Said, no, that's just an old stinking good for nothing prophet that thought he knowed more than God and thought his feelings uh, trump God's feelings. That's old Jonah, and he got up, shook himself off cleaned off and headed out to Nineveh. Now here's his declaration real quick. He told them, verse four, he cried 40 days. He said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Entered into the city a day's journey and he cried. Here's his declaration. Look at it. Get that up for me, Christy, so we can all see it together. Verse 1 and 2 is the word of the Lord. I want you to get this real quick in passing. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. God is the God of a second chance. He won't throw you away just because you did something wrong. He won't disqualify you just because you failed. Just because you did something that you're not proud of or pleased with. God won't slap you down. He'll lovingly pick you up. He'll give you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, and a fifth chance. That's the word of the Lord. And the willingness of Jonah, he went and did what God told him to do. Verses 5 through 9, the works of the people, even the king, the governor, the, the mayor, all of them repented in sackcloth and ashes, and they all got right with God. And in verse 10 is the way of God. He turned his attention from his wrath to his mercy, and he spared the city, and everybody was relieved because the love of God visited the wicked city of Nineveh. And you would think the story would stop there, and Joseph, uh, Jonah would be pleased and happy and praising God. But before we leave, let Let's look chapter 4. Jonah's displeasure. He was, predis- he was disposed to his enemy's destruction. Get this. Here's the prophet of God who went through all that trauma. 